Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the world of AI. In today's video, we're going to be showing you guys Bloomberg GPT, which is a 50 billion parameter language model that they have just recently released on March 30th. So before we actually get into the video, guys, please subscribe, notify yourself with future updates, like the video and comment down what, what else you guys want to see. I have a lot of other videos on certain things that I focus on, tutorials, as well as getting some cool features with certain AI tech. So I definitely recommend that you guys check this out. With that thought, let's get right into the video. So as I said, on March 30th, Bloomberg GPT had released its 50 billion parameter large language model purpose to build from scratch. It, they purposely built it from scratch without using leads from as well as fine tuning other LLMs to create their model. But they on their own have created this from scratch using their own data as well as their own training, which costs a lot for their own finance large language model. So basically what these guys are trying to accomplish is that instead of building their own general purpose LLM or a small LLM exclusively on domain specific data, Bloomberg is taking the extra step as well as a mixed approach, which focuses on general models, which covers many domains and performs well across a wide variety of tasks and it also eliminates the need for specializations during training time which we'll talk about later on in terms of how it works as well as what the gpt does in its tra training phase the only thing is existing domain specific models demonstrate that general models cannot replace them so this is something that we'll be checking out in the white paper that they actually release and i'll leave this down in the description below because it's definitely worth the read and it's something that is very interesting now at bloomberg they support a large and diverse set of tasks that are better served by a general model but the majority of their applications are within the financial domain so it makes more sense and is better to be served by a specific model so what bloomberg set out to do is that they built their own model that achieves the best in class results on financial benchmarks while performing competitive performance on general purpose llm benchmarks now the main purpose of what they're trying to accomplish is that they're trying to get to services like sentimental analysis a name entity recognition news classifications as well as different factual questions that they can try to answer and these are some of the things that many people have been doing in analysis as well as trying to get a better understanding of what they're trying to release with their language model now to achieve this goal bloomberg constructed the largest domain specific data set to date they have spent not spent but a 50 billion dollar parameter language model not even these other different models have made such a huge range of tasks and it just goes to show that they're putting a large emphasis on this and they see a good future within the financial industry. Now, as a financial data company, Bloomberg has constructed as well as curated financial language documents for over 40 years. So with the extensive archives of like financial data that covers a range of topics, they're able to prevalently as well as take this mixed approach of using their own data sets as well as a broader contribution to formulate such data. Now, we can check slowly down below, and this is their data sets. So to train Bloomberg GPT, they constructed FinPile. It's basically a comprehensive data set consisting of a range of financial English financial documents, including news, filings, press releases, web scrap, uh, financial reports, social media drawn from Bloom Bloomberg archives. And basically what they're trying to do is take these archives and train it within their own fin pile which is their comprehensive data set and what it basically does is it trains as well as take it takes the tokens to train within certain data sets so they spend as well as train certain things on different websites such as c4 which is the public ones obviously fin is their own specific training sets that they talked about over here but they also emphasize and focus on certain other platforms such as Pile CC, GitHub, we have Free Law, Stacking Exchange, you have Open Subtitles. Obviously, these lower ranges are smaller in terms of their tokenization uh, diversification. Uh, YouTube Subtitles, Book Corps 2, Enron Emails, I don't know why this is there, and obviously Wikipedia. So, the breakdown of the full training set used to train Bloomberg GPT 
The statistic pro statistics provide are the average number of characters per document, CD, the average number of characters per token, and the percentage of overall tokens. It's definitely something that to check out guys and how they actually go about on focusing as well as checking out. This is a lot of detail as to why they're training on these certain aspects. So it's something that you should definitely check out. Now, using a proportion of training corpus, Bloomberg trained a Bloom style, which is a $50 billion, or not billion, I keep saying dollar, but 50 billion parameter model designed based on the guidelines of Hoffman and Les Sacco. Uh, the model also was validated on the standard of LLM benchmarks. And something that I really wanted to focus on was the tokenizations. They spent mostly, most of their tokenization on their own finpal which is their own data sets and a, a huge portion on other things such as the pile and c4 so they have this huge 390 million i believe it was 345 million but that was their overall tokenization yeah 345 now in terms of its training configurations bloomberg gpt is the pytorch model trained with the standard left to right casual language modeling objective they are optimized as well as using training instabilities or sorry not training instabilities but using hardware stock stack from aws which is which is to train as well as evaluate bloomberg's gpt now this is really interesting each p4d like basic large their instances are using eight nvidia 40 gb a10 800 gpus which is insane that's a lot of gpus and this is to basically internode connections and this is also to configure their hardware stack one thing to also point out is that obviously this is going to come with the experience as well as the data that they previously had but the training results show that bloomberg training models outperform many existing ai models which serve the financial industry by a huge margin which is due to their prior 40 year data set experience. And another cool thing that I wanted to show out is how they have been not only outperforming the bit by rate, as well as the held out tests set out by each data type in their pin file, which you can see over here, the lower Bloomberg GPT is the blue one and the lower basically is better. The set of the documents is held out in a time and duplicated with the training set such that all of all of it, it is completely unseen by bloomberg gpt regardless we observe a large gap between the models the improvements is largest for specialized in domains documents like filings which you can see over here is the lowest for gpt and the figure three also shows that bloomberg gpt consistently outperforms other models while this is expected and mainly serves a sanity check it also provides valuable insights into the generalization capabilities of other models. For example, the gap up to Bloomberg GPT is the most significant in the filing category, likely because these documents, while public, are typically in PDF format and thus not included in existing data sets. And now lastly, in terms of its openness as well as its community outreach, there's a debate that they've also noted in their paper that there are concerns how LLMs should be released, if at all. While models that are not publicly available cannot be fully evaluated by the community. Now, especially for something that is expensive as their own LLM, as well as running such data sets and parameters, could be quite extensively expensive for Bloomberg itself. It's not stated like specifically if they're going to have it publicly available for free, but obviously I'm um, I, in my opinion, humbly think that it's going to be paid and it's quite, it should be quite like reasonable and it makes sense. So nevertheless, what they provide will be beneficial and it will definitely elevate the financial industry as well as the AI community. Now with that thought, that's basically a gist of what Bloomberg GPT is. It's obviously still in construction and more updates will be coming and I'll definitely release more major breakthroughs of what happens now this is definitely a breakthrough in the field of finance as well as ai while it has potential to revolutionize the industry it also raises important questions about biases as well as trans 
Pharisees, as well as a future of financial decision making. So I hope you found this video helpful, guys. I definitely recommend that you check out some of the links that I've linked in the description below in terms of their paper. Definitely a good and interesting read. You can check out one of these medium articles which summarizes a gist of what it is trying to do. And yeah, that's basically a gist of what Bloomberg GPT is. If you want more videos on different large LLMs, definitely comment down below. If you want me to execute as well as install some of them, I'm definitely willing to do so as well. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please check out some of this other stuff that I have as it would mean a lot to me. So thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, guys.